Dude. What's up, fish heads? Happy Memorial Day weekend. Let's paint something cool. Fundulus diaphanus. This is the banded killifish. I'm starting out with a black. So that's going to blow it out, isn't it? We're going to try not to blow this out, but I'm coming in at a really weird time of day. It's like 5.30 in the afternoon. It's Sunday. It's uh, what is today the 30th of May? It might be the 30th of May. So it's the 30th of May. I've been on the trout stream all day. Needed to get some stuff done around the shop, so I decided to come in. We are going to paint this today, and hopefully you guys will be able to see it on camera. Hopefully that doesn't do too much damage. There's no way I can darken that anymore. Um, I try to shoot in the morning. Sometimes it's too noisy in the morning. I've been having some difficulties with a lot of bleed through and noise. So I'm just trying to like work around that and figure out when I can come in, shoot a video, get it done, get it edited when it's not kind of encroaching on everybody else or when their sound is not encroaching on my sound design. It's very difficult to pull out a lot of bleed and, and noise in the uh, in the post-production part of the video especially when you're doing just minimal takes but we have this little tiny lipless crankbait uh, I want to say it's about two inches long that's my guess it is uh, two and a quarter and it weighs about three-eighths ounce I've got it prime black because I'm just it, the killifish is a very light colored uh, minnow but for the purposes of the video I do want to trick it out just a little bit give it a little bit of extra depth which I probably would not be able to get if I just shot it normal so I've got some black primer on here I'm gonna go ahead and clamp this all together off camera and we're gonna come right back in got this little guy all clamped off and I'm gonna spray just a traditional white over the black running right now i'm running about 35 to 40 psi probably somewhere in between let's just call it 38. and in order for these little mesh lines to show up i need to hit this primer at 90 degree angle and we're going to leave that alone there get it happy sounds like i need to clean up my airbrush cup a little bit Hopefully you guys are having a good Memorial Day weekend. I don't know when it is that you guys are going to watch this video, but when you do, I hope you had a good Memorial Day weekend, 2021. It's been pretty decent for me. I worked yesterday, got tires changed, looked at the retention pond, wanted to fish it, couldn't fish it. Today, woke up at 4.30, was um, kind of spot hopping. I'm checking out new water, so most of the stuff I did today was intel, just to see where the public access spots are. It's kind of closer to the house, so I uh, ended up on a public section in the Chattahoochee National Forest, which was gorgeous, but I will say this, you definitely want to make sure you're not bringing a, a car into the, I have a, I have a Jeep, but um, there were some cars in there that were having some serious difficulty making their way through it. On top of the white, I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit of pearl just to kind of soften it up even though we are not doing a transparent hollow body without primer when you put a, a pearl on top of a solid white it does kind of give you a little bit of depth and it kind of softens up the harshness of that stark white so now that we have that on when we look at our picture you guys are playing along there's just a little bit of I'm going to use pearlized pineapple on the belly of this fish and it's only in one little section and then there's a little bit of just a real almost like a, a shiny abalone type pattern in bands which is why they call it the banded killifish but that's all the yellow we're putting on just right around the throat underneath the throat and on that belly on top of this yellow we're going to put a little bit of detail black magenta we're going to run it at a diagonal very lightly just over top so we're going to shoot from right around the gill plate and the lateral line 
back across the body, but we're not going to come into this top half of the body. Make sure you don't have any splatter going at it. And just come from there and just make that line down. And do the same thing at the same angle on the other side. Make sure you don't have any splatter. Stay underneath that lateral line. And that's all we need from that. Just a tip of the nose here. Okay. Since we're kind of breaking away from the light to dark traditionalism that I use when I paint most of the time, and we hit the dark in here, I went ahead and cleaned the chamber out, cleaned this cup out. I'm going to add just a little bit of gold to the top portion of the back. Just very lightly add that gold in. And to the gold, because it kind of does have a yellow hue to it, to that gold we're going to add just a little bit of this burnt sienna. It's the lighter of the two. Burnt orange is a bit darker, but we're going to add this across the top of the back. And then we're going to get it really, really pearlized and shiny. So we're going to just hit this lightly. Just a little bit here on the face. And now I'm going to heat set this. For the first time, we're going to heat set this. Everything that I've painted from then until now, including that black base layer, is heat set and getting happy. So I'm going to remove this little bit of mesh here. Hopefully we'll still be able to see some of that black underneath. I don't want a whole bunch. I didn't want it real thick. This is fairly new. You can still see the pink from what it looked like originally. So this is like maybe the second time I've used this mesh. What, what's going to happen with mesh, folks, is as you use it, it's going to hold paint. It's going to get a little bit thicker. So yeah, this looks pretty, pretty good. Got just a little bit of striping on here. But to this, we're going to put it back in the cradle. And we are going to add some lines to it. And we're going to add that in like a pearl, silver pearl, something that's thick enough to be able to see it. But we still want to be able to get it nice and shiny. Folks, we are reaching way, way back with this pattern because this is the perfect pattern for the good old fashioned hair comb. And the reason I say that is because the lines are almost made for this comb. But how do we keep from getting it on the gill plate? That's a quick fix. Just grab a little bit of masking tape, add it to the smaller tooth portion of your comb. You really don't need to tape both sides, but you can if you want to. I'm just putting this over the entire thing. And now we'll be able to lay this against here. We're going to start with white and work our way and build a little bit more on top of that with some pearls. Because it, it really looks, and I might even use a little mica on this. I think I might. You would think that this is a super simple pattern. And for the most part it is. But if you want to try and match it, you're going to have to get a little bit creative with how you make that shine, just like if it were real. I'm pretty happy with how it looks so far. Just add a tiny bit of white. We need to take our PSI down on this as well. And I'm going to bring this from like 35 down to 15. Make sure I have good flow. I do. And we're going to hit both sides with the white before we do anything else. And make sure you line this little piece up here to where it touches the edge of the gill plate. And make sure that this is in a pretty even straight line. And then as steady as you can, spray left to right, all the way back to the tail. And you have those lines on there. 
and now you still have that undertone beneath that. If you want to wipe the comb off, you certainly can. I'm just going to flip it, make sure it's dry. Do the same thing on the other side. Make sure you have a good angle, that you're kind of straight up and down to the rest of this fish. And go front to back. And there you go. Now, we can come back and we probably will do just a little bit more burnt sienna on the top of this after we're fit, finished. Uh, you can also mute this out with some gold mica, which I'm, which I'm definitely going to use. But I also want to hit this with a little bit of pearl. And there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can go back across it the same way and hope that you line this up exactly. Or you can take the lines that are already there and use a painter's brush. That is how we're going to achieve it on this one. This is uh, Graftobian FX Air. You can get it at Blick Arts online. I'm just going to give this a good dip into there. And you'll notice towards the back it looks a little bit more white. Towards the front we've got some golds. Kind of blends in to the rest of the pattern. So I'm going to take this first part and just come over it nice and easy with this pearl. I'm just giving it a little bit of accent so it'll pop. Kind of want to make it stand out from the rest of the pattern or else I would spray the entire thing over with pearl. But then I think that would be too much. I think that would be overkill on this Kelly fish. Ha ha ha. Pun intended. I know. Sunday afternoon. Sunday fun day folks. Hopefully yours is good. Just kind of stop right there. I'll flip it to the other side. Get the same angle going. And then just kind of steady your hand so that you're just able to do single strokes. I'm just adding a little bit of pearl. The camera might not even pick up what I'm doing with this. But I promise you once it's dry, it's going to look like something. And we are going to heat set this. I'm going to stop there, keep it white on the back. Graftobian FX Air. This particular color is white opal. Super shiny. So let's heat set this real quick. And then to that, I've got a brush that I just used for dry powder. And where's my gold? It's a little bit of gold mica. It's super fine. And then I'm just going to push this with the brush into the cheeks and over top. Can even kind of grind that in with my hand, making sure that this is dry. And again, we can come back through with a little bit of burnt sienna and just kind of finish that off. But I want to try and grab this, just kind of run it down the entire back, give it that gold tint. You notice I'm also putting it into our vertical lines as well. get that. It can be nice and thick because as your finger works it in or the brush works it in, what's going to happen is that's just going to grind it in to your bait and give it a little bit of extra pop and shine so that that is a nice match the hatch finished look. know if the camera's picking up, but that is really, really shiny. There we go. And we can 
can still see that little bit of darkness underneath. Hopefully that'll kind of translate as we clear the bait. That should pop out just a little bit more. But now I want to add, you see it's just a little bit darker on this back here. And there's also on the gill plate one black dot. So that's super easy to add in. You can add it in with a paintbrush. Added back in just a hint of that burnt sienna. And I'm just going to coat the very back. And I'm kind of angling up so that I don't kind of get it on this part of it. just a touch more of this black magenta just around the eyes and the cheek just kind of darken that up a little bit that's looking good and maybe just just a hint back into the belly here just to kind of finish that. You can still see these bands very well but now we've got a much more accurate portrayal of this kellyfish. I'm going to add just a little bit more gold and maybe a hint of green in this mica, this crushed mica into the cheeks here. And then we're going to heat set one more time. We're going to put a uh, glaze over it to kind of set this mica in so it's still going to be shiny. And that's something that if you're not familiar with mica or you're just starting to work with mica, it's something that I've learned over time that if you seal it, and what do I mean by that? Use a glaze. Either something like this dragonfly glaze that I'm all about lately or this Comart Opaque Pearlescence. Either one of those is a very adequate sealer, and that's just going to help keep that mica super shiny, which is how you want it to look once it's clear coated. For the purposes of trying to match the hatch, there is no glitter on this fish, and I think we've got plenty of mica on here, so I'm not going to use that kind of glaze. I am going to use this opaque pearlescence. Just give it a good shake. Drop it into our airbrush and just finish this real well. And you can see when you start to add that, that this dark streak gets a little bit darker. And before it drips, because this stuff is thin, heat set this real quick. Before we put the eyes on, can't forget we need just a little black dot on the tip of the gill plate on both sides. Just need to use the cup for this. So I'm just going to add one here. And the exact same spot on the other side. We'll get a quick heat set on that. Just going to go over a quick recap with you guys of what I used on this spray. We started out with a completely black prime and then we mesh wrapped that. The mesh wrap I used was this plain old ordinary mesh wrap that you can get off of Amazon. There's always a link in the description below folks if you want that. It's right there for you. I think it's one of the top three links. So just a plain old ordinary mesh that we clamped down with alligator clips and then we sprayed white over the entire thing. Then to add a little bit of texture to it I sprayed a little bit of pearlized white to give it some depth and then we added to the belly a pearl pineapple you can see that right there in the belly. After the pearl pineapple, I did just a little bit of 
detailed black magenta underneath this lateral line and shooting back towards the tail of the fish on both sides here. And then lightened it up just a little bit, added some gold to the top, the spectra Spectratex, if I can say it five times fast, I will, it probably can't. And then added a little bit of this detail burnt sienna, it's a wicked color over top of the gold, but just over top of the gold. You can still see that gold coming through. From that point, we went out and got our handy dandy comb, laid the comb down, taped off this part so that we wouldn't actually get it on the gill plate or on that, that half of the fish, because if you notice, it's not there. As soon as that gill plate starts, there's no lines. So everything's behind the gill plate. Super simple fix. To do that, just add a little tape to your gill or to your comb. It's old school here. We're using a comb. I haven't used a comb in probably two years on a pattern, but these are perfect for it. A little bit of jet black on that tip, but the cool part of all of this is this mica. I do have a link somewhere. I will find it for you guys. This is um, off of Amazon, but it's super fine, super crushed, and I love particularly the golds and the pinks because they seem to shine better than any of the other colors that I've found, in, at least in these. And again, I can't remember the name offhand. It's been like two or three years since I've purchased it, but I will dig that link up for you guys. So drop me a comment if you'd like to see it or if you'd like to purchase it. I will find that link for you. I don't have it directly listed in the description below yet, but I will find it, I promise. So once we finish that, I added a little bit of Com Art to seal it and then just gave it a little bit more of an overspray, detail black magenta, just to edge that a little bit. Dropped some FX Air to add to some of these lateral or uh, vertical lines. And there we have it, we are ready for our eyes. The eyes are gonna be traditionalist eyes. They're gonna match the hatch. It looks like on this particular build, it is a goldish white eye. I don't know if I have the, um, I've got an eye in mind that I'd like to use, but I'm not sure if I have the right size. I'm hoping that I do, but I just don't know. We're gonna give it a shot. It would be these real eyes, and the real eyes are from lure parts. Oh yeah, buddy, woo! These are a 4.5 millimeter. It's going to be perfect for this particular build. Nice finish to this. Add just a drop of glue on either side. And then we're going to dip it in the clear coat. And that, ladies and gentlemen, fish heads of all ages, is the small water spray session for Memorial Day weekend 2021. Looks like it was made for it, doesn't it? Get this on the other side. Just kind of push that against it. And I will give you a good snap of that right now. Remember when we're doing this, you want to use two one on each side for these. I don't do them as often as I used to, so I had to remind myself that I needed two drip wire hooks on either side, the top eyelet, the bottom eyelet on the belly, and then this will be the, the drip drip wire. And get that nice and happy there this through and bring this over and how oh, we want to do this here just drop that like that and spread them out and there we have it that concludes today's lesson. Thank you guys so much for hanging out on the channel. Thanks for watching. I always appreciate the view. It means a lot to me. And I'm hoping always that I'm able to teach you guys a couple of things, maybe some new tricks. 
Uh, if you're like me, I, I try and learn stuff from you guys, and you guys hopefully are learning stuff from me, so it's community, not competition, and I always say that because I truly, truly mean it. We are stronger together. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Happy Memorial Day weekend. Until we meet again, I will see you on the next video. Cheers, and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.